I'm preaching from the book of Judges, chapter 19, verses 30. I'm doing verse 30. The latter part of that verse reads like this. And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt until this day. Consider of it. Think about it. Take advice and speak your minds. That's Judges chapter 19, verse 30. When I first read this story in Judges, it angered me and it saddened me. It made me ask a lot of questions. The questions were easy, but the answers were another matter. This is the story about an innocent woman. It's a story that rings all too familiar in the ears of women around the world, regardless of their race or social status. The woman was at home of a stranger who had taken her in and her husband for the night. A group of Benjaminites, the tribe of Benjamin, a group of them surrounded the house and demanded, bring out the man who came to your house so we can have sex with him. During this time, the worst type of rape was the rape of a man by another man. So the father thought that the better thing to do was to offer his daughter, since rape of a woman by a man carried a lesser punishment. Now, according to the text, instead of objecting to anyone being violated, the visiting husband took hold of his concubine wife and pushed her out to the men. And neither the host nor the visiting husband offered to go, but instead they offered two women and pushed one out the door. You ushers may sit, everyone else may sit. We have homes like that too. Children are allowed to be molested by the very people who are supposed to love them and protect them. Wives are beaten by husbands who promise to love and cherish them and protect them. We have homes in which the family members close their eyes and pretend the acts of violence do not surround them. Even the church closes his eyes to acts of violence against women and children. So in essence, it too punishes them and pushes them into harm's way, the church. If you look, if you look carefully at this passage, you will notice that the response of the women or the woman who was thrown out the door is not recorded. Ain't nothing about her and what she says. 
let me say that again. The response of the woman is not recorded in Scripture. Is it not there because she agreed with the circumstances under which she was placed? I definitely doubt it. I can't imagine a woman willingly volunteering to be gang raped. Is her response not there because she had developed a theology of suffering and thought the rape was God ordained and a reward would soon follow? I doubt it. I don't think that's it either. In the moments like this, moments like this one, she would be more prone to think and to ask, what in the world is going on, God? Wow. Maybe her response is not recorded because the writer of the book of Judges felt the need to keep this victim of rape silenced. Don't want it out. Maybe it's not there because her words didn't count during this period in history. You remember a woman didn't have anything to say. I believe the victim in this passage would agree that this particular story has been carefully structured to keep women silent and in a submissive role. Preach Lynch, preach Lynch. But the silence must be broken. Oh, yes. Her story not just her husband's must be told. Not just the husband's story, not just his side of it, but we need to hear from her and her side. The reason I'm preaching this sermon is because our ministry here called Her Story is a great ministry, a fledgling ministry, and this ministry has been formulated because of the fact of so many of these things happening in our church and throughout our city and something has got to be said and women have to know that there is a place that they can come and find help. <laughs> Yesterday they had a wonderful session where they all got together and painted signs and painted portraits and it was a wonderful gathering. 20, 25 of them, I'm told, were there just for women only. And many of them were here this morning as I talked about her story. And some are in the audience now. Come on in and sit down and get seated, please. Amen. And so we just thank God for it. Now, now, now the, the silence must be broken. And we must reexamine history. It's time that we reexamine history. Preach, Lynch. And, 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 and hear her story. There are countless victims and survivors of sexual and physical abuse who have been silenced from telling their stories because of scriptural eisegesis. Now let me tell you what eisegesis is. Eisegesis is putting stuff in the scripture that's not there. In other words, reading what you want to read and it's not there. Can I get a witness here? We have been told to be exegetes, not eisegetes. Preach, Lynch. And so as we look at this scripture, the scriptures, uh, 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 there are countless of victims who have been uh, talked about in religion. And, and, and there's a social hierarchy that, that women don't belong to, that it's just a men's, a man's society. You've heard of the glass ceiling? You've heard of a woman can only go so far and do this and do that. You know, I got so upset the other day, and I know a whole lot of you PNGs are going to get upset, but I don't care, you see. You know, my best friend of the Caucasian folk is the ex PNG president twice. And so I told him the same thing, but let me say this to you. 
is that, well, well, PNG, you know, the soap operas and all this, and all oh, we just love does and oxidol and all, oh, ever since, oh, and the soap operas when a girl marries and Portia faces life and Young Widow Brown and Stella Dallas and oh, all oh, my children, oh, 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 that's good. And locally based, oh, that's good. But blacks and women never have reached a plateau with all that good stuff going on. You get here and no further. No matter how smart you are, you get here and no further. Never in the history have they reached the plateau of being at the top slot. Priest Lynch. They get here, then they got to go lateral and go somewhere else and become a CEO there, but never here. It's a hierarchy. Yes. And a lot of black folk and women have worked under that hierarchical situation and get nowhere. Time is out for silence. Somebody got to say something. Can I get a witness? The scriptures have been manipulated and religion has been presented in a manner in which countless acts of violence are justified. You can take this Bible and make anything you want to make out of it. And if you don't come to Bible study in Sunday school, you will never know whether you're being manipulated or not. Can I get a witness here? Preach, Lynch. Take, for instance, parents claim Exodus 20 and 12 when they say, Honor your mother and father as they prepare to violate their children. In other words, honor mom and daddy, and mom and daddy can do whatever they want to do with you, and you got to honor mom and daddy, and then they add the other part, because your days will be long on the earth that the Lord given you, and beating the hell out of you at the same time. That's a mischaracterization and an interpretation of what the scripture says. Preach Lynch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we got a whole lot of them say, well, you know, and the old folk were good at this, spare the rod and spar the child. Oh, you've heard that since you were coming up. Spare the rod and spar the child. When, when that scripture, what that scripture, and when that scripture is talking about guiding a child like a shepherd guides sheep, the Bible also says parents do not provoke your children to wrath. Jesus said, cursed is anyone who leads a child astray. The Bible says husbands, can I get a witness? The Bible says husbands says, wives submit to your husbands. Well, you know what? Husbands have used that down through the ages, and women have fallen for that okey-doke trick that you are supposed to submit, but not him. The Bible didn't say husbands submit. It says Mutual submission. It says, husbands and wives, submit yourselves one to another. It's a mutual submission. He ain't no head. Being the head don't mean he's the boss. And you got nothing to say. That ain't what the Bible says. When he talks about being the husband is the head of the wife, all that means is that he was made first. In creation, he was made first. Priest Lynch. See, if you know the word, you go to 1 Corinthians 11, it tells you that God was made before Jesus. Jesus was made before man. Man, can I get a witness here, was made before woman, and woman was made before children. That's how they line it up. It ain't about how smart you are. It's the chronology of how you were made and created. But if you don't come to Sunday school, if you don't come to Bible class, you'll fall and be beaten all the time thinking that it's in the will of God. Preach Lynch. Preach Lynch. Husbands, 
But Jesus tells us that we are to love even our neighbors as ourselves. This is a passage white batterers do not understand. White batterers don't understand it. So today, so today we tell this woman's story and her pain in hopes that it will encourage other women and men to tell their stories and help us to line up on the side of justice. There are a whole lot of folk watching me right now, and don't think that you are the only ones getting this. Folk all over the world are getting this right now. And you know what I like about it? Because if it don't help you, it's going to help somebody. Somebody's going to get help. Can I get a witness here? You know, i tell you what I want you to do. Just mentally right now, use your sanctified imagination like I've done. Use your sanctified imagination. And I want you to understand what's going on in this house. Listen to this. The daughter says to her father, Now, I know I'm not supposed to question your will, Daddy, but please do not send me out to these men. Please, Daddy, don't do it. And he ignores her as if she has no voice. She cries. The visitor, not wanting to cause trouble for the stranger who has put him up for the night and eager to save himself, instead of showing love and putting up a fight, thrust his wife out to the men. Push her out to the men as they take her. Her crying and her wailing can be heard for miles. The neighbors just close the doors. This is all in your Bible. They just close the doors, shut their windows, and decide not to get involved. After all, the woman's husband concurs. So if the husband is all right with it, and after all, the homeowner is well thought of in the community. Matter of fact, he's a civic leader. He's a member of the NAACP in the Urban League. I think he's a member of New Jerusalem Baptist Church, and I think somebody said at one time he was the chairman of the deacon board. Preach Lynch. He's the one whose large ties helped pay the pastor's salary. Or he is the pastor of that church with 3,000 members who most are women. How is he going to have such a big church and don't stand and fight for the women that makes up the most people in his church? Because if it weren't for the women... Can I tell you what one of my pastor friends a long time ago who's now deceased told me? He said, Reverend, I told my men once, Brethren, if all of the women left Bethany, the next morning I'd call a meeting of all of the brethren. And I said, Brethren, all of the women have left. And the only thing I got to say to all of you brethren it's fair you well. Because I'm going with them. So no one comes to her rescue. The men rape and beat her all through the night and let her go at daybreak. She cries out to God silently all night and wonders if God even cares. And as she tries to make her way into the house, she falls dead on the doorsteps. It's all in your Bible. Some of you might be wondering, why didn't she yell for her husband to open the door? She wanted to. But she remembered that he had pushed her out there. It was her husband who had pushed her out there. Can I get a witness? So she lies there and dies. 
She dies because of the wounds that her abusers inflicted upon her body. She dies because of the wounds they inflicted upon her spirit. She dies because of the wounds that her host and husband inflicted upon her soul because they did not value her. She dies because her neighbors helped kill her by witnessing the incident and doing nothing about it. And so she dies. The same morning, her husband gets up and discovers her at the door. And his only words to her are, get up and let's go. But she does not respond because she's dead. He then picks her up already stiffening body and places her upon his donkey. He takes her body home and he cuts her body into 12 parts and sends the pieces to the 12 tribes of Israel. Cut her up into 12 parts and sends her pieces to the 12 tribes of Israel. This shocking parcel provided the necessary incentive to muster troops for an ethnic war. They wanted war. So the victim's husband retells the story to the tribes in a manner which excludes him and his largest participation. He didn't even mention his part in it. And in the next chapter of the book of Judges, in chapter 31, the husband never tells the people how he pushed her outside to be gang raped. He never explains that the largest suggested that the largest daughter, instead of him, that he be offered for his wife. And you know what? Let me tell you something right now. God bless you. Husbands daily take their wives to emergency rooms and explains, my wife fell down the stairs. They omit the part of how that fall led to from a shove. They don't tell that part. Can I get a witness here? Huh? 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 Uh, parents take, take their children to hospitals every day and explain that their children fell while playing and broke an arm or leg. They don't tell the part that they were beating the hell out of the child. But you know, as I said this morning, I got a million dollar rider on me. This church has a million dollar rider on me, insurance, million dollar rider. In other words, if I say and do something to somebody that is untoward and causes somebody to have whatever, then they can sue the church and sue me because I gave them wrong information or miscounseling or whatever you want to call it. Or if I, if I, observe something in my counseling and I know that it is my duty not only ethical and ministerial but legally to tell what I saw and what I think it is and if they come and lock you up and if you try to sue and after they find out that I was right that it was you who did it to the child then I'm free. But if I call something that goes wrong, then you can collect the money. I'm preaching here because all doctors are under the same mandate because so many folk will take kids and take folks somewhere and say, look what happened. How many times you watching 48 hours and 60 minutes and not 60 minutes, but 20, 20 and all that other stuff that you watch. Can I get a witness? The man the other day in the car in Kentucky, he runs off the embankment. He goes down in the woods. He leaves the car, woman in the car dead. He comes out. He tells a great story. I mean, it's a great story, a believable story. Well, I tried to save her, and I tried that, I tried that, but the folk ain't dumb. They said, okay, cool, man, simmer down, get you a shot of this coffee, and after you cool down. And they in the back room talking, now let's check this out. And they check it out, and when they check it out, they said, something ain't right here. Go get him, bring him back. If Sister Lynch and I are laying in the bed, and all of a sudden I call and say, my wife just died, Hey, they come, bring the paramedics and bring everybody, but guess what? They would not go too far. You're not planning any trips, are you? 
Well, I got a revival. Well, we want you to hold that revival because we need to talk to you. Well, man, we've been married 57 years, full-time and uninterrupted. Well, you're trying to say I do something to my wife. We don't know, but we want to be sure because Sister Lynch is a fine-looking woman, and she ain't got no business being dead right now. <laughs> Last time we saw her, she was on TV telling folk how to live, and now she dead? No, no, sit down. We got to check you out. We got to make sure that ain't no hank and paint been going down. And that's the right thing to do. Preach, Lance. You know, some ministers in materialistic religions will have you believing that God is like that domino slogan years ago, delivers 30 minutes or less. But sometimes God is silent. In Isaiah 54, verses 7 and 8, God said, For a small moment have I forsaken thee. I had a young child ask me the other day, and I said, Thank you, Lord, because I was preparing this sermon. She said to me, Reverend, how long must I pray to God and wait for an answer? Because I've been praying now for two years. I read stories about abused children who said that they prayed every night for countless years that God would step in and change their situation. These are children who are not asking for financial blessings. They just want their dignity back. They just want their bodies back. They just want their self-respect back. There are some situations that the Bible verses cannot answer. I'm preaching here. Ain't no answer in the Bible. No verse in the Bible. Can I get a witness? There are some questions that attending a seminary can't help you to answer. There are some questions that are just difficult to answer or to which there may be no answer, especially when God is being silent. I wondered, and I'm going to close, I wondered why God kept silent in this particular passage. God revealed something to me the other morning, church. God said, Damon, yes, there are times when heaven is silent. But what does that leave for us to do? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When heaven is silent, when God ain't said nothing, what does that leave for us to do? I'm preaching here. I'm preaching here. I'm preaching here. I'm preaching here. Can I get a witness? Most of the time, the church is silent. Most of the time, Christians are silent. Most of the time, my prophets and preachers are silent. And most of the time, my ministers are silent, God said. I've sent people your way, you ministers and saints who profess to love me with all your heart, and you were silent as well. Don't put that silent thing on me. Why come you didn't say something? You knew he was an abuser. Oh, I got that black eye. I fell into a door. That's a lie. Your own mama knows he beats you. I've seen mothers and fathers because of Bible send their children and daughters back into situations. Talking about God will work it out. What about you? What are you going to say? When are you going to say something? When you know that little children are being misused and abused and you say nothing, don't put this on God. Why are you silent? Reverend, I'm into a blended family. I said, I told you when you came to me with this guy that I saw something that I didn't think was too cool. Uh -huh. Oh, Reverend, yeah, he's so nice. Yeah, he's nice, but if Reverend can see something through the niceness, I think it's worth you looking into. Yeah. I know you need somebody. I get so tired of them telling me, I just need a man in my bed. Anytime you are so insufficient 
with yourself and in and of yourself that you need a man or if you just need a woman, something wrong with you. Because I like Damon. And most of all of my requirements are filled and fulfilled with Damon. And when I'm mad at myself, we soon get together, me and myself, and we fix it. I ain't got to run to hither and yon because I'm so inefficient within myself to get somebody who can do nothing but take me further down. Your friends don't know you when to see you. And you get to a point you don't even look like yourself. That ought to tell you something that something ain't right. You know, our silence, our silence could be why we hear from rappers. I love the rappers. I'm one of the few preachers that love rappers. I wish we had more rappers in this church. I really do. Can I get a witness? Y'all remember Tupac? Anybody remember Tupac? Tupac was a rapper, but Tupac was a rapper with some daggone class, and Tupac had a message, and Tupac addressed the issue of gang rape, a gang rape in a song. He said, baby, don't cry. Keep your head up. A 13-year-old is on the verge of suicide due to the emotional pain she's in after being gang raped. And Tupac said, you got to find a way to survive because they will win if your soul dies. Baby, please don't cry. You got to keep your head up even when the road is hard. Never give up. Tupac Shakur, long live Tupac. Now, if a rapper, if a rapper can come up with some, why can't the choir come up with some? Why can't the band come up with some and tell somebody? <laughs> this is what the church needs to be doing, offering a hopeful word and help to victims and survivors of abuse. We can't stay silent. We need to speak and act on behalf of those who have been broken by life and tell them that they are not alone. Can I get a witness? We need to stop making them feel as though the beatings and the verbal abuse and the rapes are their fault. We need to look at ourselves and see if we played a role in this story. Did we play a role in the father who didn't care for his daughter? Did we play a role of the husband who punished and pushed his wife out the door? Can I get a witness? Woo! The people of Judges 1930s, I go to my seat, were told to think about it. And you and I are being told to think about it. And then think about the countless victims of sexual and physical abuse. Those who received the man's message had half the story and when we know the whole story we now know the whole story consider it after you know the whole story and then give your verdict and then after you know the verdict act on it speak up about these issues that are Luke league practice speak up in the fraternity and the sorority functions speak about it at the office speak about it at church meetings speak about it from the pulpit speak about it at home the church really needs to get, preach Lynch, yeah. to know Jesus yeah. in all of his fullness because to know Jesus is to participate in the ways of Jesus. Yeah. I get so tired of people, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and don't know another verse of the Bible. <laughs> Let me say this to you. 
which involves reaching out to ourselves to stretch and to grow toward the embodiment of justice. We need to reach within ourselves to tap into the rich resources of courage and passion that God has placed within us and begin to help those who have been wounded. That's why this ministry is so vital in our church. Can I get a witness here? Broken and scarred by life, God has given us the tools to help restore hope to the hopeless and faith to the faithless. God has given us all a voice to speak out against the injustice in this world lest we become like people in this text. I don't want to be like nobody in this text. I got a daughter and three. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I got daughters and granddaughters. I got nieces and nephews. I got niece sitting here now. And now it used to be just nieces, but now it's nephews too. I mean, this place is so crazy out here. I mean, they got nephews. and You, you got to protect everybody. You, can't, you just can't protect the girls. You got to protect the boys as well. Can I get a witness? We have come so far down in life that we got to protect the boys as well as the girls. And second, to all of those who are victims and survivors of sexual abuse and of any type of abuse, God wants you to know something this morning. Whatever it is you're going through, it's not your fault. God knows it's not your fault. When someone has you trusted, misused, and abused you, they stole what God had for you. But the great thing about God is that God is more than enough. Can I get a witness? God will help you reach inside yourself and say what happened to me was not right or what is happening to me is not right so that you can start taking back who you are. Take back what's yours. We run around here singing a song, take back what the devil stole from you. I want it back. Take it back. What about taking back your dignity? What about taking back your pride? What about taking the back who you are? We need to put that in the verse of that song. Not just materiality. We need the devil to turn me loose. There is hope. The fact that you made it this far proves that there is hope. God wants you to know that the church is wrong when it shames you. God wants you to know that it is wrong for the church to silence you because you have a right to be heard. God wants you to know that it is wrong for the church to abandon you when it's supposed to be a community of healing. God wants all of you who have been violated and battered and misused and abused to know that you don't have to hide your pain anymore. You don't have to hide your anger. No. If you're mad, if you're mad, say you're mad. Words like damn it are good words. You don't have to hide your wounds anymore. Can I get a witness here? Jesus was not ashamed of his wounds inflicted by persons who had not harmed him. You don't have to be ashamed of your wounds. God wants you to show them because they tell of a resurrection story. If somebody has bothered you and now that you're okay, God has restored you and brought you back to where you need to be, you ought to say, hey, look what happened here. Because every scar that is left on your body is something that God brought you through. Can I get a witness? Thank God that scars heal. That's what a scar is for, a reminder of what happened to you. If your heart is wounded by some joker or some girl that you had no business hooking up with in the first place, thank God for two things, that you finally came to your senses and that he or she is gone. And don't be listening to none of your friends. Well, honey, he wasn't all that bad. Well, you get him. And then show him your wound. Show him your wound. Show him where he hurt you. Satan stole your joy 
but God can restore it. Satan drains your faith. But God can replenish it. Satan killed your spirit, but God can resurrect it. And like Jesus, you can have a resurrection story. Can I get a witness here? I heard him say, I have redeemed you. I have bought you. You are mine, and I love you. You are precious in my sight. Can I get a witness? Stand on your feet and shake somebody's hand and say, I'm glad that I belong to Jesus Christ. Give God some praise in the house. Give God praise in the house. Give him praise in the house. Think about it. Reconstruct yourself. Brother Adrian, the door is open. I want somebody to come down the aisle. If you need prayer this morning, come on down the aisle. If you need a word, come on down the aisle. If you need to join and get on the side of Christ, come on down the aisle. Don't sit there any longer. Don't let this sermon go to waste. If you need, whatever you need, God's got it. So just come on right now and give me your hand and give God your heart. Come round. The ushers are coming. The deacons are coming. The preachers are coming to get you. Come now. Right now. Just now Trust him. Whoa. Just now. 